Um, Helen, thank you so much for doing this. We are here partly to talk about your work, but also to slightly belatedly celebrate the publication of The Locust and the Fern, which you very kindly agreed to read from. Just in introducing your reading, would you tell us why now you have come to work your mother's Actually, my mother was the one who urged me to write this story. She has been after me for so many years, but I wasn't listening because who wanted to listen to one of his parents, you know, stories. And I had some issues with her because my mother left when I was six years old, seven years old. So, uh, and um, I wasn't ready. When I, uh, I was ready, I listened to her and I felt as a daughter that I understood my mother for the first time and as if I gave birth to her. And as a novelist, I felt that I am in front of the pleasure. And how has it affected um, your relationship with your mother now? Well, um, why, why I was listening to her I started loving her more and understanding her. And um, I, of course, I blamed myself for the, the, the years which, you know, I was very, in a way, cold towards her. And um, by, by the end of our conversation, which uh, took one year, or one year and a half, we became the best, the best friends. And, uh, no secrets, no, uh, no ill feelings, uh, just, you know, sheer uh, bliss and, and joy among each other. And then, unfortunately, my mother died before I, I wrote this book. Actually, I wrote one chapter while she was alive, because all of a sudden she said, I don't want you to write about how poor I was. Now I have somebody who comes home to help me every day, and um, and uh, I am known now in the neighborhood that I'm very comfortable financially. So I don't want anybody to know about my past that I was very very poor, and I was uh, I used to look into the soul in, in my village when I was very young, and to find. Uh, uh, wild vegetables or something to eat with my mother. And I remember that day when she told me uh, in the remote, I thought I'm not going to write the book. And I changed my mind, I'm not going to write this book. But I had a uh, lunch with Helena Kennedy when I came back from Beirut. And Helena asked, what about uh, your mom's um, interview, the conversation with her? And, uh, she was very excited. I said, Helena, I'm not going to, to write it. That's it. Why? I said, because my mother doesn't want me to, to write about poverty, and I am so drawn to that, and it's so interesting to write about how she suffered, and also about Lebanon, how Lebanon was in the south of Lebanon, how people were, uh, people who live. And it's, it's not only um, a personal story, it's about also the family because of the word of the and etc. etc. So uh, maybe I shouldn't be attacking the problem. So Helena, who also comes from a humble background, she told me that she always, always, her parents, her mother, everybody, whenever they, they heard her on television talking about her mother's background, would say, Helena, stop it. Don't talk about our backgrounds. We don't care. Now you made it. Just leave us to me. So I said, what shall I do? He said, write this chapter, call your mother, and read it to her. Because my mother is illiterate. She cannot read or write. So this is what I did. I took one, uh, one week. I took one week uh, or ten days. I wrote the first chapter, and I called my mother on the telephone, who lived in Beirut. And I said, mother, do you like to listen to, to something? She said, sure, and I, I read it. I read the whole chapter. Silence for a few minutes. 
And then she said, daughter in Arabic. Ya Hadithi, daughter, go. Go on, write whatever you want. What would, what would you have the rules that you set yourself in dealing with real material? Um, well, I was very honest. And because my mother was illiterate, she, um, she trained her ear to listen and to memorize the classical Arabic, whether in um, from television or people talking or cinema or whatever. And um, so it was very easy for me really to, to, to sit and drive. But whenever I felt that I wanted to get involved, I would get involved and then I, I just cut everything, <laughs> my involvement, because I wanted to be very truthful. Uh, I want her voice. Not, not, not my voice at all, because my mother was in literature, she was very intelligent, and she always, always um, felt very regretful that she didn't know how to live and write. And here I am, writing her story. I thought, I'm not going to, it's not, the book is not about me. I'm not going to, to write what I, you know, how, what I felt all the time, or, or to put the words in her mouth. And because she was an amazing storyteller, I didn't need to, you know, to, to just uh, imagine or invent or anything. And um, did, you uh, so any, I, did you use any other source of material? Yes, I used uh, actually after I, I wrote the book, my half sister and brother sent me all the letters which her mother used to send her, and my my mother kept them. I remember when we, I was talking to my mother, she said, do you want to, to look at, uh, at uh, Muhammad's stories? And I said, no, uh, uh, letters and, and uh, you know, everything, his scribbled. She, she, uh, she uh, um, gathered everything he scribbled, even, even on the match or whatever. She was so much in love with him. And with the written word, so she really uh, looked after um, every, every paper he left. So she said, do you want to read them before I was there? I said, no, I don't want to. But when my uh, brothers and sisters knew that I was writing the book, because I didn't, I, I wrote only the first chapter when she was alive, and then I, um, I, I put it uh, when she became sick. I didn't, uh, I didn't read, I didn't try or read the letters or anything. So uh, after she died, I kept the, um, all my notes aside. I didn't want to even look at them. But two years after, I just uh, gathered my strength and courage, and, and I started writing. This is when I uh, read all the lectures, and I was captivated, captivated. Did you record it? No, I didn't want to record uh, my mother when she was talking. I wanted her to just so, you know, we talk, we said she talks, we, uh, this is how it was. She would remember the story, uh, even when I'm in London, she would call me at three or four in the morning because she couldn't read or write. She said, how am I going to remember next day that story? While I was dreaming, I immediately, I thought of that episode and she would, she would wake me up and tell me, this, uh, you know, that episode. And, what do you this book? Yes, I would, I would like to read. So, did you which, say? Which, which did she mention? Ah, I'm going to read when my mother was trying to, to decide all the characters. She, she was such a character. Well, um, after she married Muhammad and he died, she found herself in, um, in a big mess. So, uh, I'd like to read uh, from that part. It's under the title, The money in your pocket is more beautiful than your heart's desire. When creditors knocked on our door, my young son 